A big question I kept getting is, where did you find this car? How much did you pay? A little bit of a problem with the car. Gotta have her garage kept. Get those. Boom. I mean, it is just such a smooth car. You can literally drive this car with one finger. Floats through turns. It is like the weirdest experience, but it is so nice. Yeah, let me know about a good set of new tires to throw on this car, something that does not jeopardize the ride quality. I know this video was pretty long. I know there was a lot of me blabbering, but I, a lot of people were asking questions about you know how I got the car, this, that, and the other, how much I paid. So I wanted to go ahead and fill you guys in. So I recently picked up a 2004 Lincoln Town Car Ultimate with 34,000 original miles on it. And I posted it in a group that I'm a part of on Facebook, a Lincoln Town Car like enthusiast group. And I just posted some pictures of it and I had a lot of people message me different things. There was people messaging me, asking me how I found the car, where I got it at, how much I paid, all types of stuff I, got, I was getting messages about and I just figured the best way to kind of do, you know, instead of answering all these messages and doing like that, I could just make a video for you guys where you can maybe see the car a little better, better angles of it. I got better lighting than I did in those pictures and um, yeah, kind of fill you guys in in what I just picked up over Labor Day weekend. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the 2004 Lincoln Town Car with 34,000 miles. Just in case you guys don't believe me, boom. It's kind of crazy to see that 34,000 miles on a, on a 20 year old car is absolutely nuts. And as I step out here, bear with me because it is pretty windy. So I'm just gonna try to talk loud and kind of try to shield the microphone as best as I can. And I know I picked a pretty odd location to film this video, but I figured a cemetery would be good because it's quiet and you guys could actually, you know, I don't got to sit here and dodge cars and you guys could actually hear me. But this is the car. I'm going to go ahead and just do like a slight walk around for you guys so you guys could check it out. Nice chrome. Let me back up a little bit. Beautiful chrome, beautiful, you know, those are the OEM rims from Lincoln. See, you got the ultimate. And I wish, kind of overcast, I wish the sun was out because when the sun hits this paint, there's like a sparkle in it. Um, it's a crazy color. It's like a, it's like a beige, tannish, cream color. But when the sun hits it, there's it's it's hard to explain. I'll get I'll be doing more videos of the car as time goes on, and I'll get you know a nice one of it shined up and in the sun. But even without the sun, you can see this thing really shining. Just such a beautiful car. I mean, look at that chrome bumper. It was clear headlights and I know it's not for everybody a lot of people will call this an old man car a grandma car a grandpa car I get that let me show you guys the interior as well I mean these back seats just look like they've never even been sat in it's just like the Lincoln stitching in the seat and just got these rubber mats in previous owner had those in but some little scuffs and stuff right here but the Lincoln kick plate on the door and then it's just like just the little details I don't know how well the camera picks this up but this is almost like a like a goldish bronze color even on the the little lock itself and the wood grain throughout this is the same wood grain that's in the front You can see this beautiful, beautiful heated seats, even back in 2004. Just trying to get you guys a shot of everything here. 
No sunroof or moonroof on this one. But that's okay because I really didn't want one. I don't tend to use them when I have them anyway. Beautiful. The rims, the rims are just one of my favorite, favorite part about this car. And I know these are probably the original tires that came with the car. So if you guys have any recommendations for tires, and I don't even think they gotta be white walls because I'm not sure if I really care to keep the white walls. I'm just kind of indifferent about them. What do you guys think? You guys think I should keep the white walls on there? Or should I just do straight up black sidewall? But drop your tire Drop your tire recommendations below if you got any. Because I'm definitely going to need to throw some new tires on these just because of the age alone. So I'm going to go back in the car here so I can kind of explain to you guys how this happened. Because a, a big question I kept getting is where did you find this car? How much did you pay? This, that, and the other. So, so we're back in the car. And let me go ahead and break this down for you guys. So my old truck, my 2014 Ford Raptor, I was selling that and I needed something, you know, to buy and I wanted to buy something in cash. Now, at the time, I wanted to only spend eight grand. It was in between the Lincoln Town Car and the Lexus LS 430. I was looking at um, a lot of those, trying to see what was out there, what was on Facebook Marketplace, what was on Craigslist, Auto Trader, etc., let me actually crack this window because it's been like 95 degrees in Chicago the last couple days. And I am sweating just talking to you guys. So let me, let me go ahead and crack a window here. All right, cool. Maybe I'll crack that one too. All right, we got a little breeze in here, so that's good. So... It was in between, I was looking at Lincoln Town Cars, I was looking at Lexus LS's, 400's, 430's. I've heard great things about both these cars. Um, people swear by the ride quality and the reliability of the Lexus. They also swear about the ride quality and the reliability of these Lincoln Town Cars. Now this is the Panther platform that was used for the, um, the Ford Crown Vic, the uh, Mercury Grand Marquis. So, there's a bunch of parts for them. They were in service for a long time and people have seen them go three, four, 500,000 miles. And I was that's what I was looking for. I was looking for something reliable. I was looking for something comfortable, roomy. I'm a taller guy. I'm about six foot two. So I wanted to have something I was comfortable in and something I could just cruise and eat up miles with. So Lincoln Town Car was on my radar. So I started doing my search and I found this blue Lincoln Town Car that was listed out in Indiana. It was for $8,000. It had about 75,000 miles and I believe it was a 2009. The lady swore it was in excellent condition. She said it looked great, all these great things. So I planned to go out to Indiana on my way up to my parents' summer place in Michigan and stop and see this town car and hopefully purchase it. I met the lady at a casino parking lot in South Bend, Indiana. She pulled up and it was terrible. This lady swore that the car was mint and it was just absolutely an experience from hell. And if I wasn't going out to my summer place after and I just strictly went out there to you know see her in the car, I would have been very, very upset. But I didn't feel like I really wasted a trip because it was on the way, so. But anyways, the lady pulls up, the car is absolutely beat, and she tells me, as soon as she opens up the door, she says, oh, I have a, uh, something pulled, you know, something showed up on my dashboard here. I lean over, it's a check engine light. I'm like, this lady was probably like in her late 60s too, so I'm pretty sure she knew what a check engine light was. I'm just, I'm guessing she was kind of playing like the, the dumb card, whatever. So I'm like, okay, let me just check out the car. So I'm, the interior was beautiful. The car did have lower miles. It was a 75,000 miles on it, but it had a check engine light on and cosmetically everything was messed up. I'm gonna throw up some pictures for you guys just so you could take a look. It had a cracked rear tail light, um, scuffs just on the side, 
scuffs on the rear bumper, chipping and stuff. And I know that's stuff that could all be repaired, but for $8,000 for, you know, a Lincoln Town car, a 15 or 20 year old car, I'm not trying to, you know, buy it and then dump an extra couple thousand into it to get it to look like it should. And that's just cosmetic stuff like that is stuff that just bothers me because I know it's not supposed to look like that. And my OCD would just absolutely drive me insane. So I, I couldn't deal with that. So after looking at the car and checking it out, I didn't even test drive it. I kind of told the lady, like, I cannot give you $8,000 for this car. And she said, what can you offer me? And I told her looking at it and not knowing what a check engine light is, what's on the check engine light and everything, I could probably offer you $6,000 where she said, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. The best I could do is $7,700. And at that point, I handed her the keys and I said, see you later. So after that, me and my girlfriend hopped in her car. We started driving up to Michigan and we were going to be in Michigan for three days for Labor Day weekend. And I had the cash still in hand and I knew I wanted to spend about eight grand. And I started looking all over Facebook Marketplace in Indiana and Michigan where we were going to be and started to see what was out there. Lo, be, lo and behold, I found this 2004 Lincoln Town Car. I looked at the description and it said it was a son trying to sell it for his father and it was the grandfather's car. And, you know, I, I shot the guy a message. He was about an hour away from us. And I said, you know, I really want to come check it out. When can I come see it? And he said the following day, which was Sunday. So on Sunday, me and my father drove out there to come look at the car. It was a completely different experience than what we experienced with the, the Blue Town car. This thing was absolutely mint. He had it in his driveway. It was shining. The sun was beating off it. It was There was not a speck on it, a scratch, a dent, a ding, nothing. We were Me and my dad both looked at each other and were just like, whoa. Because you know when you play the used car game and you go to buy a used car, that's one of the things you look at. You start to look at the car and see... What can I throw at the, you know, the seller to see where I can, you know, get some money off? So me and my dad started looking at this car and we kind of both looked at each other and just said like, this thing is like probably one of the cleanest town cars literally in the nation. Like it is low mileage. I'm sure there's some out there somewhere that have less than, you know, 34,000 miles, but this thing is low mileage. It is super clean, super rare. It's the top of the line trim for the year. We were just like ecstatic, me and my dad. And we kind of just looked at each other and was like, we cannot lowball this guy. He knows what he has. We know what he has. It's just a matter of do we want to pay it or not. So how much did I pay for this car? The guy had it listed for $10,900. So just a little less than eleven grand, which I thought was pretty fair considering the condition of the car. When I first saw the 11 grand and I just saw pictures of the car, I was kind of like, okay, whatever, like we'll see. Cause I, you know, I was still thinking about the blue one that I looked at and the condition of that one. So when I saw this one and, and I, you know, saw how clean it was, I was like, okay, his, his price is actually a pretty fair price for, you know, what the car is. So we're going back and forth with the guy. I'm talking to him. And I said, look, I had, I have eight grand cash. I said, we could send you the other money through Zeller PayPal. Would you take 10 for the car? So I offered him $900 less than his asking price. We were going back and forth in his driveway and he said, I can't do 10, but I could do 10.5. If you could do 10.5, the car's yours. So I was already willing to go up to 10 and then I was thinking, am I gonna let this car slip away from me over 500 bucks? And for 10.5, I know it's a 20 year old car, but this car is pristine. It is mint. Even this video is not going to do it justice. So I had to, I just looked at my dad. We spoke, you know, we talked it over and I just said, let's just do it for, you know, let's do it for 10.5. So I bought the car. I drove it home from Michigan. And as soon as I got home, I did an oil change on it because let me show you this. If you look here, it says next service due either May 2nd, 2018 or 37,000 miles, whatever comes first. Obviously, this never hit the mileage, but we are way past the date for an oil change. So the first thing I had in my head is, as soon as I get home, we have to change the oil on this car because I cannot, it has been sitting in this car for, I mean, what's, what's the math on that quick math? Seven years, the oil has been sitting in this car. So I need to change the oil. So I stopped on the way home 
and I got the Ford Motorcraft oil with the filter and I went ahead and propped this baby up and I started working on the oil change in my driveway in like 95 degree heat at the peak hottest point of the day. So I'm trying to get this drain bolt off. I'm having trouble doing it. Sure enough, the thing finally gave and I'm unscrewing it and I forgot to pull the little breather, uh, whatever you want to call it, the breather hole on the oil drain pan so that when the oil's going, it's it could flow fast and not get like spit back out. I forgot to open that up. So there I am underneath the car. I'm letting this oil pour out and it's pouring out at like lightning speed. And all of a sudden the oil drain plant, the oil drain pan that, you know, it's going into starts overflowing beautifully right into my, uh, my driveway, right on the concrete of my driveway. So there I was panicking, grabbing anything I can, towels, paper towels, whatever, to try to stop it. I grabbed another oil drain pan I had in the garage, threw it under there real quick and tried to save as much of the oil as I could. And I did a pretty good job, but that is a mistake I will never make again. I will always triple check that from now on because I guess you live and you learn. And I know some of you guys are like, well, why don't you just take it to a Jiffy Lube or like somewhere like that or whatever and get it done. And they were open, but I didn't want to do it because when it comes to my cars, if it's something I could do on my own, whether it's changing fluids, oil changes, washing the car, anything like that. If it's something I could do on my own, I will pick to do it on my own every time because I just want to make sure it's done the right way and it's done to my standards because I'm a freak when it comes to my cars. I like them to be taken care of the right way. I want to make sure it was done right. There was no funny business going on and that's what I get for trying to do it on my own. But we got the oil change. The seven-year oil is done. It came out it, it just looked black, like it looked dirty, you know, black oil. Um, it didn't look like anything crazy. There was nothing like milky going on with it. It didn't have any sort of weird haze to it or nothing. It looked just like old black oil. So, but she's got fresh oil in her now. I definitely want to do the coolant. I definitely want to do the transmission fluid and filter and the rear diff fluid. That is going to be stuff I'm doing over the next couple weeks, months, whatever it is when I get around to it. And I will be doing videos on that stuff. Not necessarily how-to videos, but I will do videos documenting what I do to the vehicle to keep you guys updated. The only other thing I wanted to mention to you guys, and if you could see, there's like a couple little like marks right here. And that is because I had some sort of stuff blowing out of this vent and I don't know what it is. I took a video earlier of it when I saw it happening and I'm gonna go ahead and roll that video right now so you guys could check it out. And I'm hoping you can tell me what exactly this is. So here's the video. And if any of you guys could tell me what this is, it keeps coming out of the vent. It came out of this one. You can see some of it's still in there. It looks like almost like a, I don't know, it's like a foam, almost like it would be like a foam, like a, for like a gasket or something. But every time I turn the air on, little pieces have been coming out of the vent and I don't know what the hell it is. I don't know if it's because the car's been sitting for so long or what, and it hasn't been used. I don't know if you know, or you have any idea. Drop a comment, let me know. So I literally turned the fan speed all the way on high and I got these particles everywhere. It literally shot out onto the seat. So I gotta clean this up now. But yeah, I don't know what it is. It's like a foam, but when you touch it, it gets like black stuff, like an oil almost on your fingers. I don't know, I gotta clean this up. So as you can see, it was like this little stuff and it came out and it was on the, you know, it's like when you touch it, it almost like disintegrates and it's like oily on your fingers. This car is, like I said before, this car was sitting for some time. So I don't know if that's just some sort of like dirt or mud that got built up in like the AC system or whatever. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a mechanic like that. So I really don't know. But 
that was the only thing so far that kind of threw me off where I was like, whoa, okay, what's going on here? I don't know what this is. But besides that, the whole two hour trip home from Michigan and everything else, this car absolutely just floated down the highway. No issues. The airbag suspension in the rear works great. And I didn't have any problems. So if any of you guys know what that was coming out of my vents, what substance or thing or whatever that was, please drop a comment below about that. And then also give me a recommendation for tires for this car. It doesn't necessarily have to be white walls, but do you think I should keep the white walls on the tires? And yeah, let me know about a good set of new tires to throw on this car, something that does not jeopardize the ride quality, because obviously that's one of my main reasons I love this car is because of that ride quality. Besides that, I know this video was pretty long. I know there was a lot of me blabbering, but I a lot of people were asking questions about you know how I got the car, this, that, and the other, how much I paid. So I wanted to go ahead and fill you guys in. So we went over how much I paid, where I found it, a little bit of a problem with the car, I guess you could say, with that stuff coming out the vent. And I'm trying to get your guys' opinion on tires, so make sure you let me know about that. But first video, kind of, first actual video of the Lincoln Town Car on the channel. If you guys like the video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Keep an eye out because I will be trying to push out content with this car as much as I can. I'm also going to be doing window tints on it because this car has absolutely zero window tint and it's weird. I've always had cars that have tints on them. So we're going to put tints on it, but we're not going to do it super, super dark. Just like a nice little shade of like black tint. I think we'll really tie it all together very nicely. But yeah, thank you for watching the video if you made it this far. Appreciate your guys' support. Let me know what you think about the car. Let me know if you think I overpaid, underpaid. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think of the color, the trim. If you've had one, how many miles does your hat, yours have? Whatever. Open discussion in the comments below. So feel free to write something. I, I try to respond to every single comment I get. So as always, thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned for more content. And we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.